Hello. I don't know if this is like too crooked, too uh, sideways and et cetera, et cetera, but uh, here we are. Here's this new water aha or something that's like bubbly with kind of like lacroix, but not. That's what this is. Okay, that doesn't fit there. Doesn't really fit anywhere though. Hello. I don't know why my voice is so low. It's probably because I'm stressed. I don't know exactly what kind of vlog or what this will be. I do want to say that it's interesting the approach I've personally experienced as far as like, hey, these are the numbers. Let's face these numbers, these facts, do something about it i just saw on this press conference earlier you know when it's funny but in a hurtful way in a way that causes some anxiety inside and some feelings of huh well that's interesting and i feel like there's nothing i can do no way to express how poorly that is handled to shut someone up and call them stupid because they asked something like you know here are the numbers let's proceed forward what do you have to say or to call someone that you're panicking people by again putting out facts calling on people to come together and face this together it's, it's just like <laughs> i don't know i don't know to me, it seems so logical to see that and see there's wrong in that. That's not how you handle a situation that's basically that's, that's basically controlling information that people know that would benefit them. Trying to be the sole ruler and controller over these people. Whether it's your company, your family, your country. I don't really know how to deal with that. I don't really know how to express myself right now either. But I, I wanted to briefly mention that. It's such a brief moment in time i guess both of those but um on lighter notes i colored my hair i don't know if uh, you can see i've been trying to lighten it back to my lighter version of hair during the summer my hair is lighter i think it's better i feel it looks like more like my natural hair color oh and i have this i'll dream yourself is what this shirt says i don't know if you can see it all I'll, I'll dream yourself. Almost four o'clock. I have been in a lot of anxiety today, last night, and I actually have written something. That's what I was going to do. I was on video chat Wednesday with Pine Tree, and uh, it's been something that I've been wondering for months, and I've been trying to find an answer for months. Why do I not feel like myself? What is missing or what is too much of? What is wrong? What is off? I've been feeling off. I know that we grow and we change every day, every month, every year. I know that I'm not who I used to be, but I'm also not who I am now either. For months, I've been asking myself, of this months i found little answers and then when i was speaking to him he asked me if it was a lack of control i think in the past it has been in a way but i don't think it has ever been a lack of control i feel like it's been a lack of received control to go even further from that i think it has been like my boss said paralysis by analysis for me there's so many choices and i'm not talking about hundreds but kind of but there's so many choices there's at least two choices in everything Thing, and it paralyzes me. I don't know what to do with that. I need to, since I was 32, so the past like two years, even younger, you know, it was before I met Pine Tree, before I went to this school even, I felt this huge gravity pulling me to stay and give up my dream. And when I say my dream, it's not one dream, one little thing. It's not like, oh, I want to be an actress, which I didn't. I kind of did, but I just, I didn't want to settle on one thing to be because a lot of creatives will tell you it's hard to choose just one thing when you're a creative person we even talked about that i don't think that anyone is not a creative person but there's people who have that calling inside of them that's how at least they want to live through life and work throughout things in life through i don't know if that made any sense grammatically and that's like me so i don't think i always wanted to be an actress i remember wanting to be an act actress around middle school because i didn't want to choose just one thing i wanted to live like multiple different lifestyles and lives and just people and i was just curious and fascinated by by the world and by society and by people by all of us by how we interact what causes differences and what causes not even what causes but the differences and the similarities between each other
each other, et cetera, et cetera. So, but what I actually ended up saying this Wednesday was I feel a lack of my voice being free. I don't, I'm not going to say exactly what I said because I don't remember word for word. And I'm, I'm going to go into what I wrote to myself here in just a second. This like feeling censored and my mouth being taped and my hands tied behind my back by this perfectionism take on choice my first relationship i remember watching that guy struggle with just making a choice he would write that he was not going to attend class he would like be so perfectionist about his email the class had already started by that time and i remember i think i said it to him too but i remember definitely you know keeping it in my head like okay Rena, take take note the professor preferred to know that you're not attending class more so than the perfect way to say that i've gotten into that now yeah in the past two years three years when was i last at that other job i think yeah, about three years i would say exactly i've been stuck in this feeling of i can't make a move until i'm very sure of what move i'm going to going to make that is the wrong way to approach things you will not progress you'll not move you'll not get anywhere you just have to pick something gather your information make the the choice that you feel comfortable making at that time with the knowledge you have at that time and work your way through that if that choice ends up not being the best choice just keep on going and choose something else and just i feel because of my age because and not because of my age as a fact but relative fact because i have tried so many times so many things and i have failed I have not I've not failed they will tell you so many people in entrepreneurship in YouTube in um, in everything they will tell you like the the millionaires will tell you there's no such thing as failure you fail when you don't try more than when you when you try and it doesn't go as you hoped or planned you learn from those things that don't go as planned or as hoped they're not failures but I started seeing it as failure because I started seeing well I'm still at home I'm not where I I want wanted to be at that long before at this age I wanted to like move out and already live my life the way that I kind of pictured it have a partner a life partner and family and all that stuff and I let that kind of weigh me down and keep me from making any decision going forward I was going to make only the right decision and guess what there is no right decision I was on the phone with my therapist this morning because I felt just so so heavy with all of this stuff and more he said something about the thing that up to this point people felt was secure their jobs you know the nine to five or right now it's like eight to six the health insurance even like retail everything that was so secure so like it will always be here it's kind of being turned upside down in a way we don't know how all of this landscape will look like in a few months not just the physicalness of the virus you could kind of argue that this isn't much different than any other virus trying to keep it from being a recurring virus i think that's like mainly what everyone's focused on and also the efforts that people get severely sick and they need respirators and hospitalization there's people who get into accidents they have other issues it's like overcrowdedness you know and people dying not because of the virus as much as the inability of the system to cope with the people who are sick who would recover otherwise you know if they would have access to those resources beyond that it's the recession that is said to come people being afraid to get closer to each other i mean this is really kind of crazy when you think about it when i think about it because all i've seen was people kind of distancing themselves more and more with social media and everything i wanted my whole life to bring people together closer and be connected and feel the oneness this will be so much more difficult because physically you'll be scared to interact with people as you did before restaurants bars etc some people still don't let it affect them or they did not they're in denial that doesn't mean that it won't catch up to them them, that fear nor does it mean that they won't you know always be like that and they will move forward and they'll interact like they used to but a lot of people aren't in that state they don't respond that way it's going to look so different and the effects the business that was lost the money that was lost i mean at my little company sure there there's business loss blah 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 but something like a a restaurant and the tips and everything flight attendants and air 
airlines. I mean, airlines might face something like this for months. You know, people are afraid to fly. And again, not everyone is afraid, but a lot of people are. It's going to change everything. I feel like this is a huge reset. And I was lying there last night and I was just dealing with everything. With my personal relationships, my personal relationship with myself, especially with my relationship with the world. This gives my heart joy. But I'm scared because it might affect my relationships with some entities. Because I can be very blunt or honest, even though I feel like I've changed a lot in how I talk about people and about situations. If you don't really become self-aware or if I am not able to speak something per perfectly, it can still cause a lot of drift, a lot of stuff. Like, how, how can I justify doing this? I can lose everything everything but I already lost everything I lost myself and losing myself I think cost me I've said this before but I don't think I've like published it I truly believe that losing myself cost me at least it delayed my relationship with pine tree it's so interesting that like that dynamic is so interesting we came together and we had a, sh a shared set of values and dreams and desires but we also had a shared set of fears just it was such a difficult timing to to have a great outcome at that time i don't know if there would have been a better time i think things probably went the way that they should i think that because of how we've gone through these years i say that because of our journey i think it was just necessary it's incredible when i think of who i was before meeting him like before before meeting him you know when I met him I had made some choices that prevented us from connecting and I think he was in the same boat and that's interesting and I always felt that was unfortunate but I think I think stuff still worked out <laughs> somehow stuff still w worked out it's just kind of cool and incredible at the same time as it's it can be discouraging and I think with the YouTube it's kind of the same and I kind of say YouTube but I don't know what form my life will take you know from going forward from now <laughs> from going forward from now going forward it wasn't like the same thing but it was like this shift of stuff change of who i thought i was or who i thought i could be and who i thought i needed to be just kind of like reevaluating everything me and my life and my relationships how i handled those and how i handle life yeah i think after these two years i'm finally at that Point, also being forced by everything that's going around at that point where I'm sort of ready to come back to my path. I think we both are. I think we have been. I think that's why we've kind of talked better and we've sort of been better than in a long time or arguably ever. I think it's uh, the best feeling when you're able to be yourself. As my therapist would say, words and all. You still have the other person's, I want to say approval, but that's probably not the best way to <laughs> describe it. You know, you're still okay to the other person. Anyways, so let me start this little thing. Oh, my stomach and everything is hurting. All this anxiety, not cool. So you kind of cooled down a little bit, but I'm not sure you cooled down enough, but I'll give it a try. So here I go. I started YouTube in the shadow of something that could barely be called a relationship. It wasn't losing someone I liked, because it wasn't all that. It was people putting words into my mouth, showing a false me speaking for me instead of me speaking for me. I started YouTube to speak my truth, have my voice, and it felt more great than anything I've experienced. I stopped YouTube mainly out of exhaustion, out of feeling I needed to do more without knowing what that was or how, etc. I censored myself and I began censoring myself in everything. The exact opposite thing I achieved when I started the videos. And recently, it became very clear why I don't feel alive anymore and why I have incredible anxiety and loneliness even when there are people in my life and possible action plans. I've become paralyzed by trying to know what the right choice is before making a choice in anything. I can only describe this sensation as a very slow, very painful death. 
And though I picked up the camera and tried to come back to it, I always chickened out or didn't follow through with another video. The thoughts running through my mind of what could happen if I'd post a video that wasn't perfectly satisfying every single person and entity in my life, which would put me in danger at a job, in a relationship, which I see both as vital, well, that was overwhelming and paralyzing as a result. I stopped moving and I've done none of those people or entities any favors long term. I think I learned a lot by being quiet for a while. I don't think it's something I should regret. It was truly part of the journey, but I also think I need to find a way back to me. I can't be loved for who I am if I'm not me. Who will even see me? I preach about being yourself. That is more important. Let me take that back. I preach that being yourself is more important and soothing than being loved for who you're not. But I haven't actually done it in a very long time. What examples do I set? I'm not doing it to be an example. I say that stuff because that's what I actually am telling myself too. I believe it. I know the bliss and joy of living it. And life is short no matter how long it is. And now times are so uncertain. And even when you try to be safe, you can't guarantee you will be. Not just physical health, but finances and even relationships in a time of such stress. The economy will have to face a crazy tough decision time or is already doing that. The scary part is not so much getting this virus but the consequences once it passes. How many of us will be left and how? Money will not have the same value and materialism will change its shape. Everything is for certain already changed and I'm trying to be safe when my safe choices mean zero guarantee of anything but anxiety and unhappiness that chases anything, job, partnership, friendships, etc. I already lost everything by staying safe and I just know that if I'd focus instead on being me and bringing to this world what only I have to offer that's the safest choice I can make and I know how to do that not this minute but I know that somewhere inside me I know everything is already available and this is a huge reset for all of us in all our aspects of our lives that part at the, end, the almost at the end is something that my dad has said everything is already available i already have everything that i need all the answers are in you people can help you get those answers out conversation it can help you get those things out but it's already in you you know who you are you know what you want but it's it's that journey that sometimes it becomes a journey sometimes you know instead of already being i didn't do a bad job last night at like midnight <laughs> when i first started it that's exactly how it went the relationship didn't mean anything that person didn't mean anything but at that point i wanted a relationship more than that person he was good looking but i didn't love him and i didn't love anyone until now <laughs> They were starting to tell me what I wanted. Oh, Arena, you should go find yourself someone who is ready to have kids. And that is not what I wanted. I didn't want that at that time. Their expectations of who I'm supposed to be on me. It was so stifling and so painful that it drove me to something so terrifying in a way as posting things on YouTube. And it was terrifying because people, if they would see that one, they might not understand or misunderstand, take it out of context, etc., etc. Or two, they might use it against me. There are some people out there who will observe you and take you and then give you what they know you want to hear. In a way, that also kind of made Pine Tree and I a little more complicated because I was subconsciously always protecting myself from that and not just subconsciously. Don't, don't look in my mouth. If I haven't mentioned this before, I think this might be dehydration or more so candida basically yeast fungal overgrowth in your system and so yeah don't don't look at it it's very gross i'm so sorry i could sit here and regret the journey that i had before meeting pine tree i just like so many times i look at him or i look at us and i'm like oh if we would have met a year before, if we would have met years before, at least on my end, it would have been so different. Because here's, here's an example. Here's an example of something that I kind of like struggle with and I still struggle with even though I'm aware and conscious about it. My whole life up to the moment that I met him, well, not literally that day, but like, you know, that 
that time period. I was always curious to learn about the other person. I was so excited to know what music they listen to, what shows they like. I was so giddy and excited. And then when I met him, I wasn't in that space at all. I had just went through like an existential crisis in a way. There was another guy that I liked over that summer. And the fact is with that guy, again, I didn't like him. I didn't love him. I liked him like, you know, he was cute, whatever. And he was nice to me. I'm going to admit that he was nice to me. So I liked him. Like, I, I remember distinctly there was one incident with ants. Yeah, no, this, this won't happen. But still, I pursued it and I was like disappointed in that. Why does no one love me, etc., etc. And I remember saying, I was very open on Facebook about it, etc. And I remember saying, I remember actually, in a way, hoping to catch Pintree's eyes. Like, because to be honest, and I'll be honest with you, and like, this is something I struggle too because like, we've been through a lot and the one thing that I feel I always kept back was being myself and myself is like <laughs> being vocal about these things but you know if we can like survive this and we can survive anything really being ourselves and then also if we can't be ourselves with each other then that's not great you know I realized that like I liked him from the very first day that he walked in the way that he came across I did not like <laughs> And he knows what I mean by that. I remember like a lot of things, if not everything, it's not what you imagine it is. And what's like even crazier is that I resisted him so much, so much, which is ironic now. So there's like one thing I wish that other guy never happened. I would have been in a better headspace and a much more loving headspace and excited and blah, blah, blah. But he wasn't at that time, which I didn't know, but he wasn't really available either. And he, who knows kind of look like I have uh, like a flesh eating bacteria on my face but I don't I just thought of that I really just liked him from the beginning but I was always kind of honest and open and so I also was going through what I was going through the other thing that happened was by the time we went out I had such a strong distrust in men years ago and I might have mentioned this maybe not years ago years ago before that there was someone who cheated on their girlfriend with me and i didn't know that until it was really late i mean not really late it wasn't years but and so i remember clearly that moment where my heart just like clicked off i will never trust a man ever because I, I was so like naive i'm like well maybe he likes me and that's like his ex i mean i know that sounds crazy i know but it wasn't i really believe that i really was just such a child and i hate that he took that away from me <laughs> unexpected tears a lot of people are walking, getting out and walking, which is great. And he also took so much away from his girlfriend. And for what? And so, like, it was hard for me to trust guys after that anyways. When Pine Tree came along, I was like, you're just like everyone else. You don't really know what you want. You don't really want me. You just, you just want something. You're like, you find me attractive. You like something about me. You're intrigued. But that's all. We all go there with people. But that's not, that's not love. And I don't want to have my heart broken. Yet, I just kind of got cocky and felt like, oh, it's fine. It's not a big deal. I'll be fine. I'm not that into him, etc. But we just kind of fell fast. We went fast. We went really fast and I think it scared us. Again, I, I'm not gonna speak for him and I, I can't speak for him. Maybe one day he'll speak for himself on here, but if it was 10 years prior to that, I think we both would have had this wonderful love story and been happy, but being kind of adults and stuff, <laughs> and stuff meant a lot more thinking, a lot more in our heads, a lot more betrayals that we've gone through, a lot more world making us too tough and our skin too thick to penetrate, to let any love in and any good and any like happiness in really at that time, at least for me. And so when we got together, I didn't really care to know what he liked. I kind of was really indifferent and mean. Yeah, very closed off. I, we've talked so much about how closed off he's been. I have not really truly let him in. It was interesting because, again, I, I talk so much about how I don't feel he's all in, etc, etc. Oh, look, cute doggy. Oh, he's so cute. He's so little. Oh, my gosh. 
Oh, all those dogs and oh my gosh, all those pets out there. I think it's time to get a dog. I'm gonna tell my mom that. Let me text her that actually right now. To not get too much into that because that's not what this episode is about really. It was hard to get out of that because all of a sudden I'm like, wait, this person, I actually, I like this person. I actually want them in my life. I don't want to lose them. I don't want them to go anywhere. It's like once you start kind of like on a wrong foot, it's kind of hard to get back on a right foot because again, it's not just that one thing that's changed your whole life has changed i didn't have youtube at all anymore and if anything i was trying to protect us so much that i took myself out completely off of facebook off of all that stuff not like right away like and it was not like the whole time it was like bouts of it but yeah i was just scared of myself and to be honest i was scared that i wasn't going to be good enough he wouldn't like me i wouldn't be enough etc etc i will i was fearing that i would mess it up and so many times I have told myself like Arena but he liked you for who you were when you were messing things up it's so hard to get back to that <laughs> I feel very like ah people are watching me like they're in my space anyways but I've struggled the only thing I know in life is being myself when no one's around I cut out people from my past and make new friends meet new people go be in a new relationship etc etc I don't know how to be myself I think I'm cute I think I'm pretty Except for, you know, those things are on my mouth. I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyways, it's terrifying. What if they don't like it? What if they decide that uh, that's not something that they like in their life? Isn't it funny how terrifying that can be? Even though you know you're a better person if you're yourself, it's still terrifying to be yourself. Because for some reason, you've learned along the way that being yourself, there's something wrong with it. There's some parts of yourself that no one should see. And sometimes you don't even know what those are. And sometimes those parts are not going to be there in the moments or with the relationships you develop now and some will be but it might appear differently to those people i'm gonna have to end this here because it was a kind of a long one battery is draining and all that stuff i don't feel good enough right now i don't feel like this is good enough i don't feel like anyone wants to hear me talk about myself and my experiences and my perspective i don't feel like anyone feels they'll learn anything from it although i i would argue that i think we learn from anyone talking about their experiences and their perspective but yet I feel so completely incompetent and so completely not enough right now not good enough and that no one will want this and that everyone will judge me like oh she's so pathetic oh like I roll <laughs> I can't really I roll oh that's hard that, that hurts <laughs> My challenge now is to to care but also continue to be myself. It's a big challenge. Ah, my voice, if you can't hear it, has locked itself from being too excited and too open. But anyways, have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you later. I was waiting to post the other one until he approved it. He gave it a thumbs up, but I'm not sure. I Alrighty, I was just going to say goodbye, camera. Why don't you let me say goodbye? Anyways, so have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you later. Uh, oh, that's what I was going to say. That I was waiting for him to give his thumbs up of the other one, of the first, first one. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know if he really wants to see it. It's a long, it's like 40 minutes or something. I mean, we're kind of all like stuck indoors, but still, I don't know. That's a, that's a, a lot of hearing me talk. And he, we just talked for five hours on Wednesday. So, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. If not, hopefully this will go out this weekend. Either way, I don't know. Hopefully. Have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Peace, love, and compassion, y'all. Annyeong kikaseyo. Annyeong kikaseyo. Zai jen. Bye bye, pekurind. Pa matane jane. Hasta luego. <laughs>